Welcome guys to another Drug Chug episode. Today we'll be talking about the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, also known as RAS, plus some pharmacology. So let's get right into it. All right, so the way we're going to break down this video is first, we're going to talk about what is the RAS system. Then we're going to see how ACE inhibitors and ARBs actually work. Then we're going to talk about the common ACE and ARB drugs and plus their dosages. Then we're going to get into why do we use an ACE or an ARB on our patients. And then we'll talk about some common and uncommon side effects. And then we'll wrap it up with who should not take an ACE or an ARB. And if you guys stick to the end of this video, we're going to have a very short quiz to see what we retained. All right, so getting right into it. So the RAS system starts out like this. So first we have a peptide hormone called angiotensinogen. And this is actually made in our liver. And what happens is it will find an enzyme called renin. And what renin does is it just snips off part of the peptide. In the picture here, we could see that the green part is cut off. And once this part is cut off, the new peptide hormone's name is angiotensin 1. Now, angiotensin 1 then goes and finds an ACE enzyme, and ACE just stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, which is a very easy name. And what ACE does is it converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has another peptide cleaved off, leaving only the blue peptides intact. And angiotensin II is actually the reason why the RAS system exists. Because of angiotensin II, it causes everything we're about to talk about. So once angiotensin II is finished being made in your body, what happens is it circulates and it actually goes to our kidneys. And on our kidneys, we actually have angiotensin 1 receptors that the angiotensin 2 bind to, okay? So angiotensin 2 binds to the AT1R receptors that are located on our kidney. And once this connection happens with the peptide and the receptor, we actually get an increase in sodium retention, an increase in water retention, because remember, water always follows sodium. And we also get an increased aldosterone. And aldosterone is just a hormone that prevents us from peeing. So it's an antidiuretic hormone. So we get a lot of water buildup in our system because of angiotensin II. All right, so now that we understand how the RAS system works in our body, so now we're going to talk about how ACE inhibitors and ARBs work. So if we remember, we have angiotensin 1 converts to angiotensin 2 through our ACE enzyme. And we already said that angiotensin 2 is what causes these effects of increased sodium, increased water, increased in aldosterone or antidiuretic hormone. So a good drug target would be the ACE enzyme. So if we block this ACE enzyme, we block the production of angiotensin II. And that's exactly what ACE inhibitors do. So another drug target would actually be the receptors that are on the kidney. So if we remember, we talked about how when angiotensin II is made in our body, it actually goes to our kidney and it attaches to the angiotensin I receptor or AT1R. And once it attaches to the AT1R receptor, we get that increase of sodium water and aldosterone. So it would make sense that another drug target would be to block the AT1R receptors. And that's exactly what ARBs do. So these are our angiotensin II receptor blockers. 
And any time we give an ACE or an ARB to a patient, it's going to decrease the sodium, which decreases the water retention, which also decreases the aldosterone, and this overall will decrease their blood pressure. So now that we know how ACE inhibitors work, let's talk about some of the common ACE inhibitors that you might run into. So by far the very first ACE inhibitor that we see a lot of is a product called lisinopril. And the brand name is Zestril or Prinavil. And notice how lisinopril ends in IL and so does the brand names. And so that's one good way to remember it. And I do want to mention there is a combination product of lisinopril and hydrochlorothiazide. HCTZ. And this combination product is uh, actually branded as Zestoretic or Prinzide. And the hydrochlorothiazide is actually a water pill and we'll be talking about that in another video. For now we're focusing on just ACE inhibitors and ARBs. So the next ACE inhibitor drug is Enalapril. And the brand name for this is Vasotec. And the dosing for this is very common to lisinopril, which makes it a little easier on us to remember. Our next ACE inhibitor is ramipril, and the brand name for this is Altase. And if you notice, the dosing is very different than the other two ACE inhibitors. So ramipril, uh, the way one person can think about it is it's your alternate ACE, or your alternative because of the different dosing. If there's one thing you're going to remember from this video, let it be this. All ACE inhibitors end in pril. So lisinopril, analapril, ramipril, and there's a lot more ACE inhibitors on the market, and they all end in pril. All right, so now let's go over the common ARB drugs. So first, we have Losartan, which is Kozar, Olmosartan, which is Benacar, and Valsartan, which is Diavan. Now, Valsartan starts with the letter V. Diavan has the letter V in it. That's one good way to try to remember it. Also, if there's a second thing you're going to take from this video, it should be that all ARB drugs end in Sartan. So who do we use these ACE and ARB drugs on? Well, first, if a patient is hypertensive or they have hypertension, meaning they're, they have very high blood pressure, then this would be a good agent for them. If the patient has heart failure or you're using it as a cardioprotectant, uh, this is another good indication or patient we could use ACEs and ARBs in. Uh, and then the last two are kind of together. Uh, if someone has chronic kidney disease, ACEs and ARBs actually are kidney protective. Um, so if they have chronic kidney disease, it'll actually help the kidney. And if someone is type 2 diabetic, it means that there's a lot of sugar in their blood, which is getting filtered out by the kidney. And the kidney is going to be destroyed over time. So if the ACE and ARB drugs are protective, it would make sense that an ACE or an ARB could be used in a diabetic patient. All right, so let's go over some common and uncommon side effects from ACEs and ARBs. So one common side effect could be hypotension, meaning that their blood pressure is too low. This is if we give too much or if the patient is too sensitive of the drug, it'll push them to hypotension. Uh, the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. The next side effect would be increase in potassium levels in your blood. And a rare side effect that we can see is something called angioedema, which is the intense swelling of the lips, the throat, the tongue, and it can be very life-threatening because it blocks the airway and they could suffocate. But this is very rare. It happens in 0.1 to 0.2% of patients, it is predominantly more common in African American patients. Now one side effect that I do want to mention, and this is only for ACE inhibitors, is dry cough. 
So if we think back when we have angiotensin 1 that converts to angiotensin 2 through ACE, well, ACE also has another function in our body, and that's to break down something called bradykinin, which is another peptide hormone in our body. So if we inhibit ACE, in both cases, we stop the production of angiotensin 2, and we stop the breakdown of bradykinin. And this increased level of bradykinin in our system actually causes this dry cough. And one thing to note here that the ACE enzyme is predominantly located in our lungs. So if we have too much bradykinin, because we're stopping the breakdown of bradykinin, it causes cough. And one thing to note here that it's typically seen in 10% of our patients. So one out of 10 patients will experience this dry cough. Now, one thing we could do is switch them to an ARB, and this should alleviate the dry cough side effect. So now let's go over who should not take an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. So the first thing is, if a patient has too high of potassium in their system, then they shouldn't take an ACE, because remember, it increases the level of potassium in our body. Now, the normal range for potassium is around 3.2 to 5 milliequivalents per liter. Another person that has a history of angioedema should not be given an ACE or an ARB because it's likely they'll get that side effect again. And thirdly, we need to know that these are actually agents that are in category X for pregnancy. So a pregnant patient should not take an ACE or an ARB either. So a quick drug summary of everything that we learned is that ACE inhibitors, we know they end in pril. The first one we learned was lisinopril, brand name Zestril and Prinavil. Lisinopril also has a combination product with something called hydrochlorothiazide. And the brand name for those are Zestoretic or Prinzide. Then we have our Analopril, which is the brand name Vasotec. And then we have our Ramapril, which is Altase, our alternative ACE inhibitor. And then we also talked about angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs. Remember, these agents end in Sartin. So we have Losartin, which is Kozar, Olmosartin, which is Benicar, and Valsartin, which is Diavan. And remember, Valsartin starts with a V, Diavan has a V in it, so that's one way to remember that. All right, you guys made it to the end. So as promised, let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. So the first question, the brand name of Valsartan is Benicar, Vasotec, Diovan, or Zestra. So next question, Ramapril is classified as what? Is it an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, an angiotensin receptor blocker, you want to subscribe to Drug Chug, or you want to leave a like. All right, so question number three. All of the following drugs have the potential side effect dry cough, except is it lisinopril with hydrochlorothiazide, losartan, analopril, or altase? All right, so question number four. Which of the following naturally occurring peptides cause the most increase in blood pressure? Is it angiotensinogen, angiotensin 1, angiotensin 2, or bradykinin? All right, guys. So if you like the channel, please subscribe, leave a like so that we could reach other students that are looking for this help. Also, support the channel, purchase some merch. We have some awesome t-shirt designs. And the answers to the quiz are actually in the description below. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get to you. All right. Until next time.